All right, guys, this is uh, the second video, or part two, uh, of our uh, lecture about the inside of the cell. I just want to quickly just review a couple things. Again, remember, all cells make proteins. Uh, we spent a little bit of time in, this, in the first video talking about a few of these different structures. Um, I want to just kind of quickly review those. Cytoplasm, the inside of the cell. Again, that's the water and the organelles combined. Uh, so make sure we know what that term means. The cytoskeleton, which is what just gives structure to the cell. Uh, the mitochondria, this is a really important organelle. This is what supplies energy to your cells. So without mitochondria, your cells won't have any energy. Again, how they do that is they convert food energy. You know, that, that's why we need to eat food. And they convert it into cellular energy, which is known as ATP. All right, so make sure we know those three letters, ATP, that's cellular energy. That's what mitochondria are making. Um, the nucleus of the cell. Again, we said the nucleus is where all of your genetic information is. All right, that's called chromatin, which eventually is made up of 46 individual chromosomes. And again, those chromosomes carry all your instructions for how to build proteins. So if your cells don't have those instructions, then they're not going to build proteins, which means they're not going to do what they're supposed to be doing. And that wouldn't be very good for you, right? So those instructions are actually pretty important. Uh, and then we, talk, we, we finish up uh, in the first video talking about ribosomes. Right, ribosomes are the assembly line workers. They're the guys that um, actually build the proteins um, through a process called protein synthesis. So again, just kind of understand what they do. That this is a really important job. Um, you know, so up to this point, we we've talked about the, the the mitochondria, the nucleus, and of course the ribosomes, uh, which are actually building those proteins, which is a really all right, so let's move on. There's another term here. It's called the endoplasmic reticulum. I'm going to show you a picture of it first. Oops, the, the endoplasmic reticulum, it's kind of this big yellowish looking structure here. Okay. Um, and, and you'll notice on this structure that sometimes it's kind of, it, it, we, we call it smooth versus rough. Um, rough just means that it has ribosomes on it, okay? If it's smooth, it doesn't have ribosomes. That's all you really have to remember about rough versus smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Um, the biggest thing I think is, I think that's important about it is that you know the functions of it, okay? I don't care if it's rough or it's smooth, um, but it has two major functions, Number one, it kind of acts as a transport system. It helps to um, transport proteins throughout the cell. You know, so if they're built in one part of the cell, they can be transported to another part of the cell. Uh, it's also an area where phospholipids are made. Uh, you might remember this term, right? This is the um, this is the, the the little molecule that makes up the cell membrane. Well, those little molecules are actually built in the endoplasmic reticulum. So I want you to know that it kind of has sort of a dual uh, purpose to it. All right. So, you know, two main functions. Make sure you know what those two things are. Again, the ER can be rough or smooth. If it's rough, it has ribosomes. If it's smooth, it doesn't. That's all. So make sure we know what that structure is. All right. The Golgi body or the, called the Golgi apparatus, sometimes it's called. But anyway, um, the Golgi body is what, what we call the, the, the packaging center of the cell. So remember what cells are doing, right? They're making proteins. So once these proteins get built, then they just have to kind of be packaged. Um, they have to sort of, you know, be inspected to make sure that they're, they're built correctly. There's no mistakes, you know, in, in, in the production of them. And they're just they have little finishing touches that are put on them before they eventually get shipped out of the cell. So the Golgi body is kind of the packaging center of the cell. 
Again, it's sort of just make sure that the, the proteins are built correctly. So here's the Golgi body uh, of the cell. Uh, and then we have the lysosomes. Lysosomes are actually kind of important because they, they sort of have several different functions. Um, I kind of think of the, the lysosomes as sort of the repairman or the janitor of the cell. You know, they kind of do a whole bunch of different jobs uh, that are all really important. Uh, one of them is uh, they help to break down you know, any large molecules that might come into the cell. We think about things like you know, large protein molecules or carbohydrate molecules that get ingested by cells. And those things have to be broken down into smaller parts. Well, lysosomes actually do that, which is kind of an important job. They also help to repair any damaged cell parts. So let's say that there's a mitochondria that's damaged or something. And if it can be repaired, then the lysosome will repair it. Um, if there's any cell parts that are beyond repair, then the lysosome will just destroy them. Uh, that's actually a, a process called autophagy. Autophagy is just basically when uh, a cell part, so like an organelle, just will get destroyed uh, by a lysosome because it's just beyond repair. So that's kind of a good thing that actually happens in cells. Um, sometimes um, the cell itself is beyond repair. You know, let's say sometimes your cells just die. Uh, when that happens, a, a kind of an interesting process occurs. Uh, the lysosomes will actually digest the entire cell. We call that autolysis. Um, lysis means to kill, basically. So it's almost kind of like this is like the cell's own like self-destructive mechanism. So like when a cell is damaged beyond repair, um, there's a cell part, the lysosome, that will actually just devour the entire cell and just destroy it. Um, again, it's kind of an interesting thing, but it, it happens inside of your cells. So, uh, lysosomes actually play several different roles in the cell, um, and it makes sure we understand some of those things. All right, there's your little lysosome, those little purple guys down there. Okay. Uh, the final um, organelle uh, is one that primarily is found only in plant cells. Um, some animal cells have small vacuoles, but for the most part, uh, these are mainly just found in plants. Uh, vacuoles are kind of like storerooms. Um, you know, here's a, a picture of, of a plant cell here. You see this big kind of open area in the middle. That's a vacuole. Um, vacuoles, if you think about kind of why they're there. Um, it, it makes a lot of sense that they're, that they're found primarily in plants. You know, a lot of plants, you know, in fact, no plants, you know, they can't like move around, right? They're, they're stationary. So, you know, when, when, when plants um, take in nutrients from the soil, you know, whether it be vitamins and minerals, whether it be nitrogen, whether it be uh, water, you know, whatever it is, a lot of that stuff needs to be stored in the cell uh, of, 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 of a plant um, for a long period of time. Because who knows, it may not rain again, the plant may not have any access to some of those nutrients. So those things need to get stored. Um, so there needs to be that kind of storage area uh, on the inside of, of, of a plant cell. So that's what those vacuoles are. And a lot of times they're, they're big, they are massive. Uh, in some cases, they can take up 90% of the structure of the cell. Uh, so they're, they're, they're fairly large, which is good uh, for plants. Uh, this is also an area where the plant cell can store um, chemicals like toxins and poisons. So in case, like let's say, another animal eats that plant, you know, all those chemicals are, are stored up in those vacuoles, uh, and they're used as like defense purposes for the plant. We've talked briefly about that before, I think. So, uh, again, make sure we know what a vacuole is. Again, it's kind of a storage area for the cell. Again, primarily found 
uh, only in plants. All right. We're going to stop here for today, and that's going to conclude uh, the two lectures on uh, the internal workings of the cell. I'm going to highly suggest that you maybe make some flashcards, you know, learn your cell parts, um, you know, review these notes, review the, the lecture videos, uh, but you need to know what all of these things do. I wouldn't worry so much about centrosome. I right, will talk about that one a little bit more down the road, but the rest of these things uh, I did cover in the, in the two lecture videos. So uh, make sure we look over that stuff.